Hello everyone, George here, and we're back again with my implementation of Five Nights at Freddy's using the Unity engine and the HTC Vive. What we're doing in this video is I need to create the main menu. I want to start actually crafting this game and pulling together the different pieces so I have something that's actually playable rather than the random kind of juxtaposed pieces that you've seen so far. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to rip out some different assets from different scenes. Uh, common to most of the Five Nights at Freddy's games seems to be having a head or something similar uh, in the main area, pretty much darkness all around. And what I'm going to do is create a few monitors that are going to have the start, exit, and setting screens on each one. What I'm doing now is creating my sort of futuristic LCD panel that's going to hover next to the half foxy animatronic. And uh, there's going to be three of these at the end of it, but for right now I'm just modeling the single one using uh, the uh, sub subdivisional surfaces here to actually smooth this entire thing out and give it more of a sleek edge to it. Uh, you're going to see that in a few seconds. You need to go in there, add a lot of edge loops to make sure that things are crisp and clean. It's going to add a lot of extra geometry, but for the most part it's going to be fine. I can go in there and cut some of it out afterwards. But because this is all going to be in one scene, just one scene, and there's really not going to be a whole lot to this scene beyond the Foxy model in these monitors, I can get away with having a high poly count on these simple objects um, because it, it's the only objects that are even going to be in the scene. So there we go. I went ahead and cleaned up the screen. I separated out the different elements because I know I'm going to have a separate material on that screen part, which is going to say something like start or end or exit or something else. Now I'm going to create different arms that are going to extend off from this just by using a simple cylinder, doing a couple extrusions, and then beveling the side that's going to face the player so it looks nice and smooth. I create another extension arm off of that. The idea is that these are going to go off into the distance, and hopefully what I envision in my head is it's going to be dark. There's going to be maybe one or two spotlights on the Foxy model. Maybe they're going to be lightly hitting these, um, these LCD panels that are going to tell you what, what options you have in the game. And that's going to be it. Everything else is going to be completely black and dark. So I'm just saving that template out. I'm not going to create any more. I'm just going to scale this down, put it next to Foxy, get an idea of how it looks. I'm going to duplicate it and try to figure out how I'm going to lay these out. Uh, the next most important thing, though, is before I go ahead and duplicate these objects or this object, I need to set up the UVs so that I don't have a lot of work for myself to do over and over and over again. I'm going to set the UVs up once and then duplicate the object over and over again. Very simple stuff, the usual. I go in and make cuts. I separate the back part off. I separate the front part off. I start making cuts and I actually kind of screw this up the first few times and I noticed that I actually am missing some polygons on the corners for my screen. So I go back in, add them in, fuse the vertices, and then fix all that stuff. Now I'm going to go back in and then go ahead and make more consistent and clean cuts along the topology of the geometry uh, of this object. Or that is, uh, basically I'm just following the lines and figuring out where they connect in a convenient way. And then I'm going to, of course, unfold them, um, and then I'm going to orient them and then lay them out once I do that. And here I'm just trying to make some cuts here and there to make the geometry sort of fold apart a little bit easier. Now that I've completed that part, I just have to do these two arms. They're going to be very similar. I separate the arm part of it, and then I just kind of um, allow that to unfold. Then I'm going to cut off the front and the back of the uh, cylinder parts and then unfold them, and they, they flatten out really nicely. And then I have just that central cylinder part, and that also flattens out really nicely once I make a cut down one of the sides. And then the same process is done for the top part of the arm as well. Now I've got unique UVs for everything, so that when I take this into Substance Painter, everything's going to work just fine, ambient occlusion's going to bake just right, and I don't have any problems. Okay, so here we go. I go ahead and lay everything out. Uh, I'm also going to need to go in there and start setting up my materials. So I'm going to go in and start renaming things and just kind of making sure that I have a smart hierarchy of elements that I'm going to be bringing into Unity later on, just parenting each object one to the next to the next. Now I'm going to go ahead and start duplicating my objects, scaling them a little bit differently. Uh, the top one I think is going to be our start game, the bottom one's going to be end or exit, and then the one on the side is going to be the optional continue if you actually have a game to continue uh, since the last time you played. Now I'm just going through adding unique materials to each one of those screens because each of those is going to be a separate independent screen. At least that's how I envision it in my mind. There's going to be one material for all of the arms and the uh, screen sort of border, and then three separate materials, one for each of the screens. And then I'm going to go ahead and export this object out in just a second. 
Uh, actually, uh, no, what I'm going to do here is I'm trying to figure out whether or not I want to include the stand that I had created before for the animatronic game in this. I'm going to bring this in, or first I'm going to export it out as a separate object so that there's nothing else in the scene to, to mess anything up. But then when I bring it in, I notice it looks pretty stupid. Um, it just looks like I put some weird legs in there. You can't tell it's an actual stand. So I just remove it and add some depth to the floor um, just so that it's it, you, things with depth usually are easier to work with in Unity, especially with the colliders. And I want to make sure it works just fine. So I just pull it down a little bit. I don't bother to mess with the UVs. I just leave them as they are. So it's going to stretch there. But I never anticipate that you'll actually see that part of the game because you're not going to be allowed to move in the start screen. Now I'm starting to move around inside of Substance Painter, looking at the different materials, trying to assess what I want the ground to look like. And I, I want the ground to, of course, be the, the checker pattern that we all know and love, but I still, you know, it's my game, it's my unique contribution. I want it to be something a little bit different. So I start kind of going through the entire Substance Suite of different objects. I try out this gold thing, but I notice I can't actually control the color of the gold flakes, so that throws that out of there. I look at the cement, but the fact that I can't modify the, the width of the, the uh, cement itself is kind of bad. I like this personally because it's, it's a checkerboard grid, but it's broken up in a different way. And then the problem though is that I want it to be both black and white and I can't uh, control each one individually. So I create a duplicate of the material and then I make sure that I just make one white, one black, and then I go in there and I paint in every other one so that it looks like a pseudo checkerboard pattern that's kind of broken up. And I, I, I kind of like that. Um, then I'm going to go in and duplicate the material again, but this time I'm going to make it red. And each one of those little tiny in-between tiles is going to be red to match kind of um, how I had things done earlier in some of the earlier uh, videos that you might have seen where the, on the sides of the walls I had some red color. So I'm kind of liking this. I decide to go play with all the different settings and I add some grunge and some dirt here and there just to just to make it a little bit more interesting looking. And then I go ahead and save my scene out. I notice that I'm having some problems with the uh, normals on my surface. They're all inverted. So I go back, re-export the asset out, bring it back in here, and then I go ahead and rebake things just in case that that uh, inverted normal thing caused any kind of issues with any of the bakes that happened. Now I'm going to use a very simple steel battered along with a rust fine uh, using a, the dust soft smart mask on top of this just to kind of dull the sheen on the surface. I'm going to take a few minutes and look up some reference material just to kind of remember what the beginnings of these things look like. And this is where I start looking and I find this OLED um, screen. And at first I'm like, oh, I don't like that blue on the background. How am I going to control this? But I do love the fact that it's got that pixelated look to it automatically. It allows you to control a border and so forth. And then finally, I figure out that I can actually uh, pick a checkbox and then change the background image, which will then allow me to make my own images for each of those. Now in Photoshop, I'm going to create a custom 2048 by 2048 texture, and each one of these textures is going to list start, exit, or continue. I'm going to add some sort of a vignette, I'm playing around with these different settings until it actually works. I make sure I smooth that because the initial vignette that I created was very, um, well, it, the gradient was broken down into several strokes, which I don't like. Now I'm playing around with the font. Uh, I end up using this sort of italic version of this font that you see here. I like it. I add a little bit to kind of differentiate it by adding a back shadow as well. I'm not exactly sure how much of this is going to show up on the actual texture because a lot of it gets kind of distorted through that, um, through that material I'm using, the OLED material. Save out each of these, and then we're going to go into Substance Painter. I'm going to import each one as a texture asset just for this particular project. Now I can go in and change them. But I noticed that it's just a little bit too broken up, so I go and change it from being the really low res to a higher res. I then go and back into Maya and I reset the UVs on this object because when I mirrored it, then the UVs got mirrored as well. So I fixed that really fast. I resized the continue so it fits within there, re-import the asset in. And I'm pretty much done inside of Substance Painter for making this look the way I want it to. I'm kind of happy with, with how it's going to look. It's going to be, you know, these floating arms, but the idea is everything's going to be dark, so you won't need to see where they're actually attached to. Now that I've got all the textures, uh, well, well, I'm about to have all the textures exported, uh, I'm going to grab all of those and bring them into Unity. You can see the old scene that we had right there. I'm very unhappy with that. I never really went anywhere with it. So this is 
well, I just, I, I like it. It's more stylized. It's, it's more in flavor with the way my game is going to be. Um, so it just makes sense to kind of take it in a different direction. Uh, finally, I export the assets out. I bring them into Unity and I'm going to set up a light source so I get an idea of the mood of the scene. I'm going to duplicate that light source and bring them in from the side so that they just kind of hit um, in the silhouette different parts of the different objects. I'm going to play around with the different colors, make some of them a little cooler, make one of them warmer. Um, don't really do a whole lot with it, just, just a tiny bit. I'm also going to need to clean up a lot of the junk in this scene, and I've got a lot of junk on that player controller, stuff that's not even going to matter because we don't have a power manager or anything like that in the menu part of this game. Now I'm going through the tedious task of, uh, you know, placing every single material into its individual slots. But as I do that, you can really see things coming to life. I've got that emissive map, which is basically a duplication of the diffuse channel, and that really makes things look nice. Um, and then we have, of course, I need to clean up this game over stuff. I'm, I'm assessing what it looks like in the viewport. And uh, in a few seconds, I'm gonna have to be really careful because I still have uh, the bake stuff on. And here it is, it just baked the reflection probe. And the problem with that is the reflection probe is actually picking up the uh, reflection environment, which happens to be the skybox. So off camera, I because I, I, I when it bakes, it slows down my capture stuff. I actually fix all that stuff off camera by messing with the lighting settings until I get everything to be nice and dark and black. And now I'm pretty happy with the way things look. I brighten up that center light. And uh, yeah, for the most part, uh, I think this is going pretty well. Uh, you can see it look right there. And I think with your head centered right there in that view, it's going to look just fine. Uh, I go back and that's pretty much it for that video. Uh, in the next video, I'm going to jump in and actually code how those things are going to be working with a Raycast hit, make all that stuff work just fine. And I'll see you then. So long, everyone. Goodbye. Hey everyone, George here, and if you enjoyed the content, consider giving me a like. And if you had any questions about the content or want to know anything else in particular, then go ahead and leave a comment below. I'm pretty good at responding to things lately. And if you really want to support the channel, consider becoming a patron. I'll see you all in the next video. So long. Goodbye.